We've done a lot of work now on the enemies and the turrets, so let's pull all of it together. We'll begin by going into the constants file and adding in a couple more variables. One of them is going to be health, which I will set to 100, and the other will be money, which will be set to 650. Now we can pull these into our world class. At the very top here, I'm going to say import constants as C, so that those variables become available here. And then within the constructor, just after I define the level, I will say self.health is equal to c.health and self.money is equal to c.money. We'll be able to use these variables to make the game a bit more playable. But first I want to display them on the screen so we can actually see them changing. We go back into the main file and first of all we need to load in the fonts that we plan to use for this text. I'll scroll down here and just before I start defining my functions, I'll add a section to say load fonts for displaying text on the screen. And I'll define a couple of fonts. The first one will be text underscore font, which is going to be defined as pg.font.sys font. So pay attention here to where the letters are capitalized to make sure we don't get any syntax errors. The font I want to use is consolas or consolas. I don't know how it's pronounced. The font size will be 24 and this one I'm going to make bold. So I will set the bold flag to true. Now I'll copy this down and at the same time I'm going to create a larger font. I don't actually intend to use it right away, but since we're here I'll just set them both up at the same time. The second one doesn't need to be bold, so I'm going to get rid of that flag and I'll set the size of that one to 36. Now I can define a function for displaying text on the screen. You may have noticed previously whenever I've run the print function it comes down at the bottom. Well I want a way of showing text on the actual game window. We'll say function for outputting text onto the screen. This will be called draw underscore text and it will take a few arguments. The first one is the actual text I want to display, then the font that I plan to use, the text color and then the x and y coordinates where I want to display this font. Since we can't put text directly onto the screen we first of all need to turn the text into an image. I'll say that an image is font.render and here we pass in those arguments. The first one is the text, then we pass a flag for true, and then we define the color that we want to use. So once this line is run, we will have our text converted into an image. And we already know how to work with images, we simply blit them. So I can say screen.blit, the image, at coordinates x and y. Now that I have this function, let's go down into the game loop, and we've got our draw text, or draw section down here, so just underneath, this is just temporary, we'll call the draw text function. It'll be draw text. The text that we want to include will be world.health. So this is the health variable that's part of the world class up here that we just loaded in and the money one underneath as well. So the first one will be world.health, but because it's going to be an integer value, we need to make sure to convert it into a string first. Then I will pass the font that I want to use the color is going to be gray 100 and then the x and y coordinates will just be 0, 0. So let's put this in the top left corner. Then I paste this down and the second one I want to output is going to be money. So the only thing I want to change here is just the height. Now let's have a look and see how this comes up. Okay, so we can see 100 at the top, this is our health, and then 650 underneath that, which is the money. Of course at the moment, when I click to place down turrets, I'm not subtracting anything from this. Let's define the costs associated with creating a turret and with upgrading a turret. In the constants file under here, I will say by underscore cost is 200, and then I will define the upgrade cost as 100. Now let's go into our main file and back up into the function where we create a turret. Right at the bottom of it here, we create a new turret and we add it into the group. Well, after we've done that, I'll add a comment to say deduct cost of turret. We'll say world.money is reduced by c dot by cost. So that means that the amount of money that we have in the game is going to be reduced every time we buy a turret. Let's run this now. And I've got 650. And as soon as I click, I drop 200. So I can keep going. But now I can keep just clicking more and more turrets. 
I need a way of checking now if I actually have enough money to afford a turret. And that's going to be done inside the event handler, because that's where we call this function from. If we go down here, this is where we call our create turret function. I'm going to add a check to this first. So we'll put a comment to say, check if there is enough money for a turret. If world.money, which is the current money that we've got, is equal to or greater than C dot buy cost, i.e. if we basically have enough money to cover buying a turret, then we can create one. So now if I place a bunch of turrets down, as soon as I get to 50, I can't put any more down. Now let's do the same thing for upgrading the turrets. And that's done just slightly above in this section here. We check if the turret can be upgraded first of all, and then we show the button and we check if the button has been clicked. If that button has been clicked, we want to add another if statement, which again just checks for the money, so world.money, as long as that is equal to or greater than the upgrade cost of this turret, then we can go ahead and upgrade the turret and subtract that from the money. So minus upgrade cost. Run this again. So let's say I place down three turrets and then I try to upgrade one. I can't. It won't let me because I can't afford to. And this will limit how many turrets we can place and how quickly we can upgrade them. So it makes the game a little bit more challenging and you can't simply just spam turrets all over the screen. The next thing I want to take a look at is the fact that although we do have turrets placed down and they shoot at the enemies, they never actually do any damage to them. And the reason for that is that we haven't defined any damage yet. We'll go into the constants file and at the bottom here under turret constants, I'll create a new one called damage and I will set that one to five. Then we go into the turret class and we look for the pick target method. This is the method that determines what enemy we're going to be shooting at. Down here, we pick a target and we calculate the angle. And just under that, we're going to add a comment to say damage enemy. Self.target.health is going to be reduced by the amount of damage. And once that's done and the turret has fired and damaged an enemy, we want to break out of this section. At this point, the turrets will do damage to the enemies, but the enemies will carry on regardless. We need to go into the enemy class and define a new method. We'll say def check underscore alive. And for now, it doesn't need any arguments except for self. All this is going to do is look at its own health, which will be self.health. And if that is less than or equal to zero, then we just kill this instance. We'll say self.kill. And now that we've created this new method, we need to make sure that we call it from the update method. I'll put self.check underscore alive in here. Now let's test this out before we go too much further. I'll put down three turrets down here. And as they start shooting, you can see one enemy just popped away there, another one there. Each turret does five damage, but the enemies have 10 health. So it's going to take two hits from a turret. So that's why not all of them disappeared. But as they come round again, you'll see they start now getting picked off a little bit more. This does introduce a potential of a small bug, which is that as the turrets are looking for their targets in this pick target method, each turret takes a turn after the other. So if the previous turret had killed an enemy, then the next turret might still be targeting that same dead enemy and it wastes a shot. To fix this, inside this for loop, when we're looking at each of the enemies, I just add a check to say if enemy.health is greater than zero, which just means that the enemy is alive, then we're going to do all of this stuff here. We'll work out a distance and see if it's within range and so on. But if that enemy doesn't have any health left, just move on to the next one. Now we've got a way of spending money on turrets, as well as killing enemies by the turret. The next thing I want to do is add a way of earning money, which will be done whenever an enemy is killed. We go into the constant file and underneath the upgrade cost, I will add another variable called kill underscore reward. And I will set this to one. This way, whenever an enemy is killed, we earn one coin. We go back into the enemy class, and at the top, I now need to import constants. I hadn't done it until this point. Just after math, I will say import constants as C. Then inside that new method that we just created, this check alive method, if the enemy has been killed, we want to award ourselves that reward money. We'll say world.money is increased by C.kill underscore reward. I do now need to pass this world as an argument. I'll put this in here. And the check alive method is called from the update method, 
So I also need to pass it through from here. And we just follow this all the way back. So the update method for the enemies is called from our main file within this update section, where we say enemy group dot update. We now have to pass in the world in here. Now let's run this just to demonstrate how this works. If I put down three turrets and they start shooting, so you notice it's gone up one, two, because we've killed one enemy here, two, three, and four at the end. So every time an enemy gets killed, our money goes up by one. Now that's the money mechanic pretty much working. We've got a way of spending money on new turrets and upgraded turrets, and we've got a way of earning money from killing enemies. We will also eventually get a reward for completing a wave, but we'll come to that later on. For now, I want to move on to the other variable I added into the world class, which was health. We start with 100 health, and the idea is that every time an enemy gets all the way through from one end of the path to the other, we lose one health. To monitor this, we have to go into our enemy class and into the move method. And we actually already have a way of checking for this. Down here, we were checking if the enemy has reached the end of the path. At this point, we deleted the instance, but we can also subtract one from world health. This means that we also need to pass it as an argument in here. And we need to pass it as an argument in here where it's first called. We don't need to trace it back any further because the update method already receives the world argument. We can test this out now, but it does take the enemies quite a while to get around. So what I'm going to do is just add one elite enemy to that first wave because that enemy goes around quite quickly. So if I run this, the first few guys are going to be these slow guys, but it should eventually, looks like he's going to be the very last one. This elite enemy comes through. So keep an eye on the health up here. We've got a hundred at the moment. And as that enemy goes off the screen and past here, it drops to 99. So let's go and get rid of that elite enemy before I forget. And now a lot of the game mechanics are complete. There was a lot of jumping back and forth between the different classes there. But the reason for that was because we were tying them all of them together. So now all of these classes interact with each other. We have health and money that goes between each of the classes, depending on what's going on. 